Yo, what is going on everybody? It's your boy Gripper back here with another video for you guys today. And in this video, we're going to talk about a crazy turn of events that just happened in the baseball card industry as there was a shocking development that came out tonight about baseball cards. And we're going to talk all about that in this video. So before we get into that, thank you guys so much for joining me on this video today. Can we get a minimum of 100 likes on tonight's video? That would be awesome if you guys can do that for me as it takes literally just a singular second to hit that like button to show the support on this channel. That's the best way you can help me grow this YouTube. And speaking of growing the channel, I'm doing a giveaway. I'm giving away hobby packs of 2023 Top Series 1. All you guys got to do is be publicly subscribed. If you don't know how to do that, it's in your settings. Like this video. Turn on post notifications for all the content you see right here on the channel. And last but certainly not least, leave a comment in the comment section on what you're most looking forward to in the upcoming season that starts next week. I'll pick a winner once I hit 6,000 subscribers. So there is that. And one last announcement before we get into it. Uh, of course, if you guys have been watching the channel, you guys already know what uh, I'm, I'm going to say. But starting April 9th, April 9th is the first day I'm going to do this. I will be doing Sunday Night Baseball Watch Along Streams on YouTube. What that is, is basically me just reacting to the Sunday Night Baseball Game of the Week. We're going to start April 9th. I believe that matchup is the Padres versus, I don't know, I think it's the Giants, I believe. The Padres and the Giants, I believe, are that week. But uh, we're going to be doing the majority of them uh, throughout the baseball season. We will start, I believe, probably like 10 or 15 minutes before the game starts. And then, of course, we'll end after the game. So hopefully you guys are going to enjoy that. It's going to be really fun. I tested it. I tested the stream out already just to see what it was going to look like. Uh, just, you know, I just tested it out on a spring training game just to see what it would be. And it's going to be very fun. We're going to have a lot of fun. Um, I'll, I'll get crazy. You know, I'll scream and do whatever. But hopefully you guys enjoy it. April 9th will be the first one. Why not the first year, well, week? Well, because WrestleMania is on that day. And... Of course, you guys know I'm a WWE fan, and WrestleMania is the equivalent of the Super Bowl in wrestling, so I am not missing that. Uh, there's no chance. So there's that. Hopefully, you guys will enjoy it and uh, come support, because as long as you guys support, I'll keep on doing them. So there's that. Now, let's get into the topic at hand of this video, as I'm recording this after the baseball class ends. Of course, Japan had a win. I'll tell you what. USA choked that so hard. We choked that so, so hard. Situational hitting with runners in scoring position, not trying to lay down any bunts, things like that, cost in the game. I'm not big on bunting, but you got to do it sometimes. Small ball wins, and uh, there's there was a couple instances that they could have definitely bunted the ball, but instead rolled into double plays like Mookie Betts, for example. If Mookie Betts laid down a good bunt, I guarantee he probably could have beat that out. But, you know, it is what it is. That's near her there. The real season starts in a week, which we're all waiting for. So that's what's more important at the end of the day. So that's what we're looking for. So let's talk about the topic at hand today. And like I said, a crazy turn of events. So I was, before this news came out tonight, I was actually going to do a watch before you buy for Gold Label. Gold Label, if you guys are interested, comes out today. So head to your local hobby shop if you want that. And something interesting also comes out today. McDonald's Tops Chrome Basketball. It's a, a very strange set. I saw they're going to be doing retail formats for that as well. Uh, it, it's basketball. I, I think LeBron James's son is in there. Um, it, it's it's McDonald's. There's a McDonald's logo on the box. It's very strange. But if basketball is your thing, which it's clearly not mine, if that, and then that's for you, I guess. But um, we're not here to talk about those today. I was going to talk about Gold Label until this news came out. Very interesting news came out tonight about the baseball card industry. And it took me a second to, to realize what was going on because we all thought that this was gone. But it's coming back in a different way. And I will let you know my thoughts and opinions on this when we get to it. So basically, if you guys are unaware, Panini lost the, the MLBPA licensing after 2022 what that means okay so 
What that means is they cannot produce any card that has a current baseball player on the card, okay? A current player that plays for any team, okay? They lost that at the end of 2022. Now, 2023 rolls around, and we were all under the impression, we were all under the impression that there was going to be no Panini baseball cards because, of course, what's a baseball card line without, like, a Mike Trout or a Shohei Otani or an Aaron Judge, a Julio Rodriguez, a Bryce Harper, people like that, right? But Panini said, oh, bitch, I'm back. I'm back. Panini is back, but, and I say a big but, there is a big big difference between what we saw last year and what we're going to see this year. And I'm guessing the coming years, I guess they're going to keep on doing this. So I'll let you know my thoughts and opinions on this after I discuss what's going to be different. Um, it's, it, it's, it, it is intriguing. I'm not going to lie to you. It, it's actually very intriguing what is different with this because I'm going to bring up a good question that is going to spark a debate in the comment section, uh, which I think will be a good debate. No. You may ask, what's changing? Are the logos going to be on the cards? No, that's never going to happen. The MLB, MLBPA licensing, which the MLB licensing, of course, is you could use the logos and names of, you know, teams like Guardians, Angels, Pirates, Orioles. You could use your logos and things like that as well. That's never going to go away. Fanatics has a grip on that, like a vice grip on that. And they also have a vice grip on the MLBPA licensing i think for the next 10 years but they're not going to give that up uh so panini will never never ever have cards with logos on them again that's out of the question but when the mlb players association licensing comes up in like 2032 or 2031 whatever year it is now do we see maybe panini getting current players back on cards i don't think so because fanatics is just gonna have a uh, a grasp on the baseball card industry. So you may be asking yourself, what is changing with Panini baseball cards? Well, I'll tell you, like I just said, no current players are going to be in the set. But, which I found this intriguing because I didn't think that they were allowed to do this, but I guess they are allowed to do this. The set will be comprised of Hall of Famers, Legends, and prospects, okay? So rated prospects, which they put in their sets anyways, but there's, I guess there's going to be more. Hall of Famers and Legends. So it's going to be intriguing. You know, this this upcoming set, which again, Cardboard Connection comes in clutch yet again, has the scoop on this. Uh, the Tamar Johnson that is on the thumbnail of the video is a card you're going to find in 2023 Donruss Baseball, right? Donruss Baseball is back. But it is back with very heavy limitations on it. You're not going to find Mike Trout in there. You're not going to find Bryce Harper. You're not going to find Wander Franco, Vladimir Guerrero. Uh, you're not going to find... Well, you might find Vladimir Guerrero Sr., but not Junior. You're not going to find Junior. Uh, you're not going to find a Mookie Betts. You're not going to find any rookies from 2023, as in Adley Rutschman, unless he has a prospect card, which I don't think he probably will. Uh, you know, people like that, you know, Key Brian Hayes, O'Neal Cruz, I can go on and on listing current MLB players. They're not going to be in there. They're not going to be in there because they cannot legally do that because they don't have the Players Association licensing that, you know, that they would need to do that. But instead, which I didn't think that this is a, po I didn't think this was possible. I thought that minor league players were under the MLBPA licensing, which I guess they're not because Panini is going to be doing minor league in the Donruss baseball. There's a Jackson Holiday Marvels insert card that was in the article as well. Uh, of course, you guys know the Marvels inserts uh, went really popular and went really over uh, last year in Panini Baseball. A lot of people liked the Marvel cards. I like the Marvel cards. Um, I really wished that they would have did an O'Neill Cruz one, but of course they didn't, unfortunately. They did Wander Franco, though. They did Wander Franco, but... For every other major rookie, they didn't do, unfortunately, because Donruss Baseball, of course, as you guys know, comes out in April uh, every year. And, of course, a lot of you guys know that, um, you know, 
Julio and Bobby Witt and all those other guys didn't see the light of day in the rookie card realm until later in the season that year. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. Uh, you know, the hobby boxes are going to stay the same. Now, I pose a question. I wonder if hobby boxes will be cheaper. Now, hobby boxes for Donruss Baseball usually run about 100 to $110, depending on where you buy them from. Um, so I find that interesting, the fact that there's going to be a lot of retired players. So I guess retired players aren't even... Um, you know, in the MLBPA, which I figured that, um, but I'm really shocked at the fact that they're allowed to do um, rookie, or I, no, I shouldn't say rookies, but uh, prospects. So they will be doing a lot of prospects and a lot of Hall of Famers and a lot of legends, which I don't know how well that's going to go over. I don't, but I impose a question, a very good question that could spark a good debate in the comment section, right? The question I have is since Panini is known for a lot of rookie autographs, does that mean the autographs we're going to receive in hobby boxes are going to be prospects and Hall of Famers and legends? See, that is what I wonder. See, that is exactly what I wonder. Because a lot of you guys know Panini is known for, you know, putting lesser known rookie cards as autographs in hobby boxes and things like that, um, you know, so it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see because if they don't put those lower end rookie cards that are autographs in these boxes, what the, what are they going to replace them with? Like, what are they going to replace them with? Are they going to replace them with like prospects, like lower end prospects, or maybe some legends and hall of famers, like maybe what you would see in tops archives, retired player edition, some, you know, legends of the game, you know, could we be seeing that? Could we be seeing legends and relics for Hall of Famer, uh, Hall of Famers? That's entirely possible as well. So the fact that they are limiting on what they could put in there kind of sparks my interest because, you know, if they still had the Players Association license, there would be no chance that you would get anything really of note in your hobby box. You might get a good card here and there, but for the most part, like the autographs you would get in those boxes are like third tier, fourth tier rookie card autos that, you know, they would probably be one year or two years done out of the league, right? So the fact that that's changing, and that could be good. Now, that could be good. Now, I don't know exactly how they're going to compromise that because, of course, you know, not every box is going to have a great prospect or a great Hall of Famer auto in it. Now, I imagine how this is going to work. Here's how I envision this. So, in each box, you get three hits. Or typically, two autos and one relic. Could we get, per box, one Hall of Famer or Legend relic, or I should say one Hall of Famer or Legend autograph, a prospect auto, and then a prospect um, relic or Hall of Famer relic? That's what I wonder. Or, could we see two mid-tier Legend players as autographs, and a prospect relic, or something like that. See, typically how Panini works is they typically give you one good auto or relic, and then the other two hits are kind of like mid to, to, to bad, really. Um, that's typically how they do it in those hobby boxes. I've opened a ton of Panini uh, baseball hobby boxes in the day, back in the day, right? So, like, I, I have seen my fair share of what they what they do, um, you know, typically one of the hits is really good and the other two are kind of mid to bad, which also brings up a good question. How about other future sets? Because, you know, Panini, they do multiple sets a year, uh, Optic, Prism, uh, Diamond Kings, um, what else? Uh, Absolute Baseball they do. Uh, and I believe that is it. I believe I got them all. Chronicles Baseball is another one. And I believe that's it. Now, what are those sets going to look like? Are we going to do the same thing with Hall of Famers, Legends, and, and Prospects? Listen, I'm all for Prospects. If you want to call this a knockoff version of Bowman, be my guest. I'm all for Prospects. Um, so I'm not entirely sure how people are going to feel about this. Now, a lot of people don't like Panini in general. Uh, baseball, that is, because, of course, no logos and things like that. Here's what my stance on it is. I have never had a problem with it. I honestly have never, ever, ever 
had a problem with no logos. I That is one thing that I am grateful to say I have never had a problem with. A lot of people just look at Panini cards and say, yeah, I don't like them. I uh, can't stand the fact that there's no logos. Like, for example, uh, this Brian Reynolds card I have right here, right? You, you could clearly tell um, there would be a Pirates logo on his hat and jersey. Uh, but, of course, you know, they it's not there. But what Panini likes to do is they like to put photos on the cards to make it look like you see how his arm is there that would be covering where the Pirates logo is. They try to do that to try to make it so that it's not so noticeable. But some of the cards they do put out, um, I don't know if I have any on hand here. Uh, but anyways, you get my drift. They do make it noticeable in, in a lot of instances sometimes. But honestly, the, you know, the no logos have never bothered me. They never will. Um, so I'm kind of actually happy that Panini is coming back uh, to an extent. Um, you know, because, you know, with very limited resources in Tops right now, as you guys all know, Tops is getting delayed left and right. Another delay here, another delay there, another delay to my left, another day, uh, delay to my right, another delay to my back, and another delay up front of me, right? Everywhere you look in Tops, there's a delay right now. So the fact that we're getting some new 2023 product, although it might not be exactly what you and I have imagined it's a plus in my eyes because now we have more variety rather than just seeing same ass boring stupid series one on the shelf. I mean, let, let's just say how it is. Now, big league should be coming out here in like about ten or nine days from now. Again, uh, that could change. It was supposed to come out this week, but got delayed a couple more days for whatever reason. So we'll just have to see what happens there. Um, but for the most part. Um, we're not going to be seeing anything new from Tops. Uh, you know, Heritage is delayed, I guess, until late May or early June, which is unbelievable to me. I don't know how they can mess up that set. That's literally mostly just paper-based, let's be honest with ourselves here. There's really no effort that's put into that, really. I mean, it's just paper-based, really, for the most part. Uh, Big League's coming out in a couple, in about a week and a half. Um, Bowman's going to be coming out, uh, but again... With no major league players, like we're gonna go, we're gonna go quite a while without seeing anything with major league players on them after big league. Like after big league comes out next week, we're gonna go quite a while with seeing any new rookie cards of like Adley and those other guys. So I don't know what's going on, but at least Panini has something coming out. Um, do I think this will sell well? Probably not. Um, I doubt it. Um, you know, it'll pique my interest. I'll probably end up getting a hobby box. I typically always do. Um, I do like the, that you get three hits for $100. That is very, very rare in today's hobby world that you, you never see that. You never, ever see, very rarely, three hits for $100. And now, since Panini took out the active players and only leaves them with prospects and retired players... I wonder how that's going to work. You know, we saw, if you want to go check the article out, it's on Cardboard Connection. You can see what some of the card art looks for yourself. I posted one in the thumbnail of Tamar Johnson, right? So, it's it's going to be interesting to see, honestly. It's going to be interesting to see. Now, you know, I do think some people might find this appealing. I think, I, I mean, I find it appealing for what I just said. The fact that there's no current players in there, that means... They can't use rookie autos, right? They can't use those low-end rookie autos. So what are they going to do to replace those low-end rookie autos? Are they going to throw in low-end prospect autos? Are they going to throw in mid, like mid-retired players, like you know players that weren't weren't really that impactful in like the '90s and the mid 2000s? Is that what they're going to do? They could possibly do that. I don't know. But what I would like to see per box is one retired player auto, one prospect auto, and either a memorabilia card of a retired player or, or prospect. Either or, it doesn't matter. Uh, relic cards typically don't sell well anyways, unless there is a possibility sometimes that they could be autographed as well. So in some instances, like I opened a Panini Hobby Box, I believe it was in 2021, I did get three autographs. My Relic card was autographed. So that's entirely possible as well. They could slap on autographs on those as well. I don't know. But it's definitely intriguing that this is happening. Of course, we all thought Panini was getting out of the baseball game. Uh, you know, we all thought because I thought that MLBPA licensing was under minor league players. But I guess that is the 
MILBPA, which I guess they still have that contract. I thought they went hand-in-hand, hand, but I guess not. Uh, but, you know, it's only a matter of time. I don't know when that contract expires. I guess there are two different ones. Uh, whenever the Minor League Baseball Players Association contract expires, I can almost guarantee you, guarantee you that it will go to Fanatics and Tops exclusively. So I don't know what's going to be going on with Panini here. Um, do I find this intriguing? Yes. Do I do I see myself buying a hobby box? Yes. Uh, will I buy a blaster box? Probably for a channel members only video, which if you want to become a channel member, cheap plug, do it. I post videos every single week. Um, it's very fun or every other week. Uh, this week I'm doing two videos because I didn't do one last week. So check that out. But it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see. Uh, of course, we don't have a release date yet. We don't have anything with the set, the checklist, or anything like that. But all we know is it's going to be comprised of prospects, Hall of Famers, and legends of the past. So take that with what you will. I think it's going to be interesting. You know, I'm not going to be. I'm not here to say that. Oh, you shouldn't buy it. Uh, you know, I'm not here to say that. Um, I'm here to say, you know, if you want to give it a shot, give it a shot. I'm going to give it a shot. You'll probably uh, let me move this camera back here a little bit. You'll probably see me open some Panini baseball cards here because, of course, as, as you guys know, as you guys know, um, there's going to be no top product. Uh, you know, after big league, uh, what's after? What's after that? You know, what, what's after that? And it looks like we have the relic here. I could just see it right there. So we do have the relic in this box, which kind of sucks because. My last hobby box, I got um, an autograph. So you win some, you lose some. Uh, this hobby box has been just terrible, honestly, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. This this hobby box has been very, very uh, mid, to say the least. Nick Prado. Let's see what we got here. Major League Material. Ah, good old Nolan Arenado. Good old Nolan Arenado. Still not the best third baseman in the National League Central. Sorry, Nolan, but, you know, I Key Brian might have to raise his batting average a little bit to win the gold glove next year. Just saying. Just saying, Nolan, just saying. I'm probably ending up sell that card on eBay, not going to lie to you. So if any of you guys see a Nolan Arenado relic card on eBay, just know it came from good old grip and rip because, uh, you know, that, I, I'm not a Cardinals fan. You guys know the Pirates and the Cardinals have a huge rivalry. Uh, rivalry. Uh, you know, that card to me is useless. So, yeah, great relic tops. Appreciate the Cardinal relic. That is probably the worst relic you could have gave me out of any NL Central team. You know, every NL Central team hates the Cardinals. Literally every single one of us. So, that was probably the worst relic you probably could have gave any NL Central fan. I would have taken a Brewers card. I would have taken a Cubs card. I would have even taken a Reds card, as much as I don't like the Reds either. But you gotta give me a Cardinals one, really. It is what it is, I guess. I'll probably have my brother put that on eBay for like five bucks. It's all, it's all it's worth. So, guys, let me know what you think about Panini coming back into the baseball game with limitations, though. It's not gonna be the same as last year. It's gonna have a little bit of difference. But I'm interested to hear what you guys have to think about that. Do you like it? Do you not? Why or why not? And I'll see you guys in the next video.